All right, we're finally here for the final three episodes of Mushoku Tensei. Now, you guys have been hyping these up like crazy, so they better live up to my expectations. What's up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius back at it again with Mushoku Tensei, the finale, final three episodes. Now, before we get into anything with what that means for you guys who don't know, the first and last episode of every season of every show we watch here on the channel, the full-length version, which is normally exclusively on Patreon, is available for free for all you guys. So click that link in the top of the description, enjoy that free full-length, come back here for the review, and if you guys want to consider keeping that for the future, maybe check out that Patreon. It is a good time. Last episode, we ended off with Aisha and Lilia being being hopefully escorted safely back to our area in the Asura, the Fitoa region. And now we are continuing our search for Zenith and Roxy and the rest of our missing Philip, Soros, the rest of our missing gang. And with that being said, this is called Turning Point 2. Now we know Turning Point 1 was insane. I have heard comments in, in my comment section saying, hey, if it somehow reaches it to Turning Point, four turning point three this that and the other it's gonna the show is gonna be god tier s tier so i have no idea what that means i gotta find out what happens though so i say we jump right on into these episodes all right mushoku tensei season one episodes 21 22 and 23 full length version for free go check that out let's hop into this this first one 21 is called turning point two let's do this all right I mean, things do happen suddenly. You're not wrong, but <laughs> these are things that that have suddenly happened in Rudy's life. Yep. Don't know who's no. My man had a hole in his chest. What are we hearing outside? Dragons? I mean, that would be a tale. A tale to tell. You know, I hunted a red dragon on my way back from the demon continent. That would be quite the story, wouldn't it? Looks like while Rudy's cooking dinner, we got some more training going on. Oh, yes. Oh, my. Oh, yes, we do. Oh, yes. Ruijerd is nice as ever, but Eris is getting too clean with it. That's me. <laughs> I'm just over here flabbergasted. It's like her graduation from training school. She's ready. You've grown up. Shout out Ruijerd. I know it feels not that long because it's only been like 10, 12, 13 episodes. But he has been with them years. This man is a full-fledged member of the party. <laughs> That's not the pinch I was expecting. Oh my god, Rudy. Oh. Way to find some comic relief out of there, Jesus. But yes, don't be conceited. That is true. It means it's going to be a little rougher from here on out. Shouts out Eris, though. We've seen her grow up. Yes, be reasonable. I think with her eagerness about fighting a dragon and that little sneak peek we saw at the beginning, I'm nervous about fighting dragons. Yeah, you fight one, you fight 20 of them. Of the seven great powers would be forced to turn back. Yeah, I expected they would be able to handle him. Mm, see, that makes me even more nervous for Eris trying to fight one. The Technique God is currently number one. And Dragon God is number two. 100%. Yeah, we're not... We ran into a dragon, the dragon from earlier. Oh, you know if Ruijer's acting like this, it's something. Oh, we don't even see him yet, so they just feel him. Oh, I'm even more nervous now. This is the dude from episode 8. Who's I don't know who she is, but that's the dude from episode 8 who was walking. Might have been this fucking mountain. No, I don't think so. Actually, it might have been. I have no idea, because 
Damn. I don't know if you should look back at them. See? Maybe you'd insult them, offend them. You're staring a little too long? Yes. Listen to Regent right now. Why? Oh, I love his voice actor. I recognize him immediately. I need I need to know what else he's from, though. Why does he know all their names? Okay, yes. Keep pushing. Keep it pushing. Okay. Hey, that's fine by me. Okay. Touche. Hey, you guys have a great day. No. Rudy. What the? Bro. Oh my god. Listen to Ruijer right here. Listen to Ruijer. No. Why would you not listen to Ruijer? Your mouth is a muscle. And he said don't move a muscle. Orsted. What is he, an Eldian? What is he, Aaron Yeager? Wow, first off, how does he know about Man God? Why did Rudy immediately start saying the actual truth about Man God? Why? You're an apostle of the Man God. Ruijer shouts out to Ruijer for that save. Oh my god, look at this. Rudy, why the fuck did you talk to this man? He, that's gonna go right through your fucking chest. There's nothing you could do about it. Air is coming in to save the day. She will protect her oh, with the fingertips. What does he mean? I always thought you had potential, but he also said he hasn't met them yet. I'm so confused. Oh, that's how fast he is. He can only see it for a Dragon God Orsted is going to kill you. And he's talking to Man God. So this... Hold on, hold on. I don't mean to pause it. But I know you guys let me know, and I don't know if it's a spoiler. So if you guys spoiled me, I'm upset with you. But it also could just be things that they would never really say, but it's kind of just there to pick up on. But we do know that Ghislaine's, goal, uh, Ghislaine's previous master um, was the sword god, if I remember correctly, because that's what she said to Al Manfi when Turning Point 1 happened. Like, I, by the name of the sword god, insert sword god's name here. And we saw that the sword god was the actual was actually the man who came to Doldia Village and picked her up when she was the feral youngin. And her brother was talking about the man coming to pick her up and she thought maybe or he thought maybe she died was in a ditch you know but that was the sword god this is the dragon god orsted we saw the man god but why do they have human forms what's up with the whole time variance thing why does man god not have a human form why is he maybe he doesn't in this like con parallel convergence world he's speaking to us in maybe he doesn't have a form there but he does have a form here <laughs> so i'm so curious do so they all know each other? Is it like the Hashira, where if a god or one of the great seven powers... Are... Okay, I, let me back it up here for a second. I'm getting a little too ahead of myself. Just to confirm, are the gods and the powers the same? Like the seven great powers, man god, technique god? They have to be because they have the god in their name. So I'm going to go assuming they are. Do they all know each other? Do they all have beef? Are some of them on friendly terms? If a god dies... Would another god, would someone else replace them? Do they hold a meeting for that? Is it diplomacy? Is it chosen? Are you like a born? So I'm so there's so many questions. I know some of them will definitely get answered. But I'm just so flabbergasted that Rudy decided to speak to this man directly after Regent said don't to. He's, oh, I'm so upset. Also, Rudy's doing the last thing he can, He's spinning up a drill so fast it goes flying at his face. Man, God couldn't give him that power. What is Rudy doing? Okay. Front Wormgate. 
And it's breaking that. I was gonna say. Really? Laplace? Who. Uh, we know Laplace was a part of the war. We know. And the demon Loli from episode 12, who gave him the demon eye, said he has a crazy magic mana. Now, there's just no way anyone, anyone ever can survive that. That's straight through your heart. Your, the amount of blood he just gushed out is enough for death in and of itself. There is physically nothing I can think of that you can do. I mean, this will be the biggest wake-up call for him ever. If Ruijard says, I mean, I don't know. I just can't. My, my, my fucking brain is going crazy right now. I... Something's been bothering her, Nanahoshi. What is that? Maybe he's what? Please make it some for some reasons that they save our lives. Oh, we're back in Man God's world. Let's talk, bro. We need to have a conversation. What's up, what Orsh did? We have a hole in our metaphysical chest. Oh my God, I'm beating the shit out of Man God if I can in this. That was a shame. That was a shame. That's what that was. That is true. He's been giving advice non-stop, but you couldn't tell me about him? I see. Yeah, 100%. He's been our S-tier OP character so far. No match. That confirms my suspicions earlier. Even with his curses holding him back, he is the strongest there is. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, curses. I never thought I'd be saying that. He's like, hey, man, I had a second life. I guess I should be thankful enough for this, but hey, it was fun while it lasted. Now, I wonder where he goes. Like, and what would that be, man, God? You're not dead. How? How on earth could... How? It had to have been man, God, but I'm so curious to the limits of his powers. Yeah, what did she say? Nanahashi, Nanahoshi said something's been bothering me. So she's the reason? Nanahoshi said something and Orsted healed him? He was so sure that Rudy was going to die. Yeah. He's so happy to be continuing his journey with Eris. He was so sad that he was going to lose her. Hmm. Obviously, she's just happy this worked out as well, too. She's just... But I am thoroughly... I don't want to say upset, but disappointed with Rudy. Like, next time Ruijard says don't move a muscle and don't say anything... Yes. She was just worried. She would have lost Ruijard, Rudy... Literally, damn near the only people she has left in this world. Oh my god. Turning point fucking two. Holy shit. All right, on to the next episode. Episode's 22. This one's called Dreams and Reality. Good. Rui Jird can ask some questions that Orsed was saying. Eh, I think we should let Rui Jird in on everything. Even though it's a little questionable, a little crazy, and maybe not believable, we should... I don't know. The man god and the dragon gods. I mean, we've told a couple of people, we're, you know, it will take a lot of hard work. But if Ruijard keeps the way Ruijard's been, saving people, going out of his way, this, that, and the other, it will work. It will it will happen. I have faith. Hmm. He's wanted this his whole life. So many people, so many of his people, his family have died. And this, you know, nonsense violence. So this is so big to him. That's out, Ruijard. Always been one of the goats. We didn't talk about it last episode because we have a new horse right here, a new steed. But oh my god, RIP to that bull, that cow who saw Orsted, which makes sense. Every living creature has a fear or hatred of him. That makes sense now. Immediately jumped off the edge, killed himself. Like, that's fucking horrible. Jesus. I didn't even talk. We didn't even talk about that. Where are we right now? I know we're back on Central Continent. Is this really our home? Is this what the mana disaster has done to our home in the wake of everything? This is sad. His home, his entire 
land he lived on decimated, destroyed. And we still don't know where half of our family members are. Me too, Richard. Me too, buddy. It does. I need to know the details, everything behind this mana disaster. That does suck so much ass. Did, did Richard to say he's in our debt? We wouldn't be here with him without him. Like, if anything, we're in Richard's debt. Like, come on. There's no way we're saying bye to Ruijer, you know? He's had an adventure with Rudy, you know? An era, it's a journey. Four centuries, 400 years. I love characters like Ruijer, always will. Characters that are so strong, that are easily, obviously besides Orsted, but are easily one of the strongest characters we know, but say they, you know, like... Are so humble and about themselves that they say they wouldn't they weren't able to do anything except for like it's just they, they realize that there's more strength than just strength like there's mental strength emotional strength you know like and he didn't have that and rudy was able to give him that he was able to give rudy the physical strength but that's what having a relationship is you know you benefit me in the places i lack i benefit you in the places you like you know it's like give and take you know rudy is easily one of my favorites in this whole show it's not even close. Come on. That's what every teacher wants, their student to surpass them, you know? She can say that, I didn't even think about that. She has technically fought one of the seven gods and survived. There's just no way we're saying bye to Ruijard right now, right? There's just no way. I mean, he did his goal. He escorted us back home. Eris always tries to hold it in, but... There's just no way we're saying bye to Ruijird, you know? Yeah, it does fit the cycle perfectly. From Roxy, to Rudy, to Ruijird, you know? The three R's. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. It fits perfectly. Like, there's no way. We're going to see him again, right? <sighs> Undoubtedly. If I don't see Ruijard again, <laughs> I'm going to be upset. That was touching, man. I was on the verge of tears right there. I do got to blow my nose, though. A lot of the people in this area are still mourning the dead. Still dealing with loss of home, shelter. I didn't I didn't realize that there would still be a Ghislaine. There would still be an issue with like there would still be this much aftermath. Oh my god, it feels so good to see you again. Who's gonna be the first one to tell her about Gramps though? I'm not looking forward to that. I'll just enjoy this while I can right now. I'm just happy we got Ghislaine back. Yeah, they know. She knows. Oh, yeah. You're not doing this unless... Uh, yeah. Oh! All three of them died? Okay, so... Uh, Eris understands more than anyone. Hold on, hold on. Lord Pilemon... He'll lame. I'm gonna, you know, you know, the gray rat's got extensive branches, extensive families, all that. Ghislaine already looks pissed, so I'm gonna write down his name. I'll be honest, I don't know what a concubine is, but the fact, but the fact that Ghislaine is upset, understandable. You need it, my girl. You gotta process everything that just happened, come up with a decision. It's a lot of thinking, a lot of grieving, a lot of stupid politics. I cannot believe Hilda and Philip also died. You can only keep it in for so long, you know? Not only coming back, finally coming back home after 
being gone so many years only to find out about your family to see there's still this many missing to then find out you have to be sent off to another land like come on horrible that's when i thought we'd get some happiness at the end of the season god damn sylphia is in like okay so she's alive I don't know, man. Depending on where she got teleported, I have no idea how Sylphie could survive out there, man. This world is rough. Uh oh. Is this is this the time yet to be doing this? Really? Yeah, I'm nervous about <laughs> where this is leading. <laughs> I like how Rudy is the one questioning it now. Mmm, good point. That's what I'm saying. Now, especially after all the mourning and grief, you know? I don't know if now is the best time, you know? Maybe let her a little time to process this. But also, can we say no to her, you know? Like, yeah, I don't know. But then she might regret it later. We don't want her to regret it at all, you know? Like, it's a very emotionally tough situation we're dealing with here very charged i mean they've been with each other for years we know the chemistry's there she is of legal age and in this world if you're killing dragons and you're dying by the age of 14 absolutely you can have sex do whatever you want i'm just saying it just feels weird it feels like me watching my brother and say you know i've watched them since they were kids Okay. That, especially with their fascination towards beast people, that is, that is quite embarrassing. Oh, but that's all he needed to hear. Was that was that the was that the boiling point? Was that what put him over the edge? Oh wow, that was okay. Like I said, I'm down for them to enjoy their life completely. Like, look, they've been on this journey together. They've known each other for years. They've gone through literally hell and back, traversed the world, fought countless monsters, almost died. More power to them. I'm happy. I'm proud of them. I just don't know if I can watch. You know, I'm glad they're not showing me anything. I'm glad they're showing us like the journey they've been along. That was well done though. I would say tasteful. Of any ways that that could have been done, that was pretty tasteful. Well done. Oh, he's geeked. <laughs> oh, I know that feeling. That is so... Bro. Oh, way to put a damper on my man's morning. That's the thing. I don't know if not doing that last night would have changed anything. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know, man. You never know. What the hell is going to happen in the show? We have no more Rui Jerd. No more Eris. No more Ghislaine. Philip Sauros Hilda. Aisha Lilia. Zenith Norn. Powell. It's just us and Rudy. What the hell is the show going to be now? Is there a season two and three, four, five? How? What? Oh my god, dreams and reality. Talk about a title for an episode. That makes a lot of sense. Holy shit. Alright, on to the last episode, guys. This one's called Wake Up and Take a Step. So we're starting off with the Ghislaine and Eris journey. So how are we going to wrap up the season and get a set for the next arc next season in this final episode? I'm very curious. I do enjoy seeing the people rebuild their crops their land, their homes, like it truly does show. Even after a disaster, even after the worst things can happen, yeah. As long as you have people that love and support you, you can really re rebuild, regrow. I hope no more mana disasters ever strike you guys and you guys live prosperous, fruitful, long lives. Oh, Rudy is depressed, man. Still left the hair in the note there. Probably hasn't left his room in a little bit. 
So we're back at Rudy's old life. Wow, he kind of stood up for himself a little bit. He wouldn't even let his parents see that him, you know? His parents seem very supportive as well, knowing how rough he's got it. How bad those kids were at school. And with parents as supportive as them, it does make me a little more upset and frustrated. You know, look at that. All my children are strong. That he didn't go to their funeral. You know, he... But Rudy is a flawed character, so... Sometimes I do need this, though, for them to show me this side of him so I can be remembered. Because I'm so used to this strong, young, talented Rudy, you know? I forgot he's already lived 40, li 40 years of a horrible life. And he is depressed. So that's probably why they showed me that. Because he's back to a, a mood where he's not leaving his room. He's not eating. I mean, yeah, or help out, you know? That's what I'm saying. Like, I get it, bro. You're going through it. And everyone's lost people. Everyone's had horribly depressing moments in the past couple of weeks. and Or should I say years? Because it's been a few. You know what I'm trying to say, though. Everyone's working. They're not giving up. We gotta push through this. Meanwhile, Eris is doing her Eris thing. Remember when she was just learning swordsmanship and stuff like that? And how far she's come. Oh my lord. Oh, Rui Jerd, you must be a famous adventurer. Thank you so much. Still spreading a good name. Mmm, he's going for it. Shouts out Rui Jerd. You've only heard them in bedtime stories, well here's your first time, and we're good people. She feels too dependent on him. I understand her reasoning for wanting to leave, you know? It's similar to Uraraka, Uraraka and uh, Deku and My Hero. She kept relying on him too much, so she separated, distanced herself a little bit. To help get her strength up. See, look. You tell people you're superb, they're not immediately scared. This is this was starting, you know. The curse is vanishing and the good name you're spreading. I'm saying, come on. And I appreciate that. And like I said, I respect Eris and her reasons for leaving 100%. I, she needs to, yes. I love that. I love that. I hope you do. I actually like her haircut as well, too. But I just wish you could have told Rudy that a little bit. Because he's just confused and lost. And is so depressed, he has no idea what to do with himself. Oh, I'll say, who are we? This is Zenoba. Why are we seeing Zenoba again? Maybe they're setting us up for some more seasons. We're going to see Zenoba again. We're going to see Geese again. I do love the world building and that. It's very much like Invincible. How they show at the end of Invincible, we have so much more to go. Tona, yup. Which, uh, you guys commented, and I always love when you guys give me the world building stuff that I miss all the time, but that's not Tona's sister. I believe you guys said she's from a village, like near their village, but they're all like cat people. Meanwhile, she's a dog girl, so she's like different. I'm like, hey, I get it, I, like the dog kind of ears, it makes a lot more sense, you know? But, because I kept calling them sisters, you know? She's also training, she also has her little statues that she made. But it's very much like Invincible, where it's building up season two. We could see so many more. Even this dude from who knew our party dead end all of them. Oh, RIP to their third, man. I, it was. So I'm assuming that is his niece or nephew his brother or sister's child talking about bringing him food upstairs they've never even met him that's why they said the guy upstairs oh i completely forgot we have the demon loli roxy um <laughs> uh alina lee's and talhan yep uh kishirika is the demon loli's name
金も持たずにダメじゃないですかまったくまあまあ細かいことは言うでないルレ She is hilarious よしわかったルーなんじゃったかどれ She can actually she actually has a demon eye that can find people She's like, okay. And we're seeing Powell again. I completely forgot about Powell. Aisha and Lilia. He's probably so happy to see them again. Oh my god. It's been an emotional journey, we'll say that. It's been a rough time. I know, Norn. I know. I sure hope so. I sure hope so. Wow, she really can see. And then Zenith, let me know. What the hell? She's under a desert? Under that? If she can't get a good look, where the fuck is she? In the Bagarit in the Labyrinth City of Rapan? Oh, and she's gone. See, she's so funny. She seems so helpless and weak, but she's actually very powerful and a demon empress or whatever. I don't have no idea. That's my biggest issue, though, is I, oh, with the cut over to a continue screen, how many chances they could, oh. I love the visual storytelling. Continue, yes or no? It can be sometimes as simple as that, you know? I was surrounded by people who, you know, supported me and I rejected them. And then the third time they're showing this visualization of him sleeping in some, is this the dream? What is this? Back home with mom, Zenith. Little baby Norn. This is... We didn't get to see much of this after the slice of life, after like both the children were born, but this truly is, you know, a happy family. Aww. That's adorable. I love the cuts between his past life and his current life. He still has those people who supported him out there. He hasn't rejected him yet. You know, they're still out there. He's got to get up and go find them. I love the, the visual storytelling. Like, it's so big for Rudy to get up and go outside. And it's cutting between his current life and his past life, you know? Because it was so impossible for him to do that back then, you know? That first... Oh, with him even walking past his old... Oh... A visual storytelling, I'm telling you. That first step is the hardest and the biggest, man, I tell you. Even though we might not have our party, which makes me so upset. Eris, Ruby Jerd, we gotta wake up and take a step. We gotta go find Mom. We're coming, Zenith. Saint class water mage at age 5. If true, and while I would love to recruit him. So she's talking about Rudy. My mentor and my friend. There's only one person we know, but why does she have gray hair and not green? Where are... Man, no, stop. Stop teasing me, man. I need season two right now, bro. Well, you guys hyped up the end of the season, and I could totally tell why. In terms of animation, fights, and emotional impact, and like... It, like it was it hit all the markers like it truly did and the world building the teasers everything literally so we'll start with turning point two orsted and nanahoshi insane i know there's going to be a lot more when it comes to him especially because we got a little sneak peek at him at episode eight during turning point one we also got to see a couple other people i know we got to saw Kiri kishirika as well who we've seen a couple of times throughout the season but I swear there might have been a couple of more people in Turning Point 1 that we saw. I might honestly have to go back and rewatch that with how now that I know a little more context of the world, stuff like that. But how with how strong 
horse that is even with his curses with everything like the fact that man god said this man could destroy the world if he wanted to but due to his curses we'll never see that power insane his design insane his voice actor insane i actually need to look up his voice actor because i'm I, I swear i recognized it okay i immediately recognized his voice i looked it up right now and it, that little raspiness in this voice makes so much sense he's overhaul atomic samurai and he's um nanami from jjk like oh his his voice is so good i actually like him so much more now that i know he's nanami and he's fucking um atomic samurai and overhaul such good characters such he's a great voice actor so strong his curse insane the curse is i should say insane i love how we related that though to laplace and Rigerd. found out a little more details about you know their curse and where that comes from and i mean I need to know more about Man God as a whole. I need to know more about his relationship with Orsted. I need to know about Orsted with everyone. There's the technical God who is technically number one over Orsted, but Orsted would beat him in a fight. Like, that episode was crazy. I need way more of that. But then the aftermath of that, and us staying alive somehow, finally coming back home and dealing with the aftermath of our journey the entire time. Ergo, Philip and Hilda both dead. I am, I was, ah, damn, I actually liked both of them, I won't lie, like, Hilda, I kind of, you know, started liking her more at the end when she started being a little weird, but Philip's always been a very, like, a very unique, shady character to me that I wanted to dive a lot further into, so with Eris trying to deal with that and, and grasp the political situation she's in, I, I do feel like it wasn't the right time for her and R Rudy to do what they did. But knowing with what she was thinking at the time that she never thought Rudy could die, she thought he was invincible, relying on him too much, I do understand completely because you never know what could happen. She could die tomorrow. So she wanted to do that, know how it felt because he is the person she loves. So be with the person she loves, you know, get that experience. But then she does need to go on her own self-improving journey with Ghislaine. And, oh, I didn't even mention that. I'm so glad Ghislaine's alive and back. I missed her so much. We have not seen her since episode 8. And, oh my god, is she, it's as good to see her. But that was one rude awakening Rudy had when he woke up and Eris was gone and cut her hair and left a note. That was a rude awakening. And he needed it. And I, I, I emotionally, from an emotional standpoint, I love the last episode so much. Like, it, it was a great character arc for Rudy over what he's gone through and where he's been so far to where he's come now and like i said i love the visual storytelling of him walking past his old self cutting between his old self and his new self because like even though it's a different world and he got reincarnated he's still gonna be the same person he's still gonna be dealing with all the past trauma from the previous life so so well done i come telling this show so well done now if you guys don't know, we do have a Q&A section over on the Discord where you guys can ask any questions and I'll answer it during the episode or any episode of any video of that show that you guys are requesting the question for. But Masu asked a Mushoku Tensei question. Thankfully, you made it in time before I finished it. He says, do you think Mushoku Tensei has something that stands out in the saturated isekai genre? And is there anything you want other isekais, uh, is there anything from other isekais that you wanted to be in Musho Ten? Um, I think to answer your last part first, I don't really think so. I think it hit all the Isekai check marks that I want to hit. You know, a very relatable yet flawed main character. Um, great world building, great side characters, great action animation, and a, a system of power that fits and feels like it belongs naturally in this world. And Mushoku Tensei definitely hit all of those categories flawlessly, I would say. And to answer the first part of the question, is there something that Mushoku Tensei has that stands out in the saturated isekai genre? Great question, first off, because isekais are very saturated, especially nowadays. But, and I don't think, I don't think other isekais are necessarily missing this. I just think this show does this very well. And I think this could be implemented some more in some other isekais. But the very human aspect of these characters now let me go a little bit more in depth when i say that um when it comes to the characters in mushoku tensei they are very human in which i say they make good decisions bad decisions selfish selfish decisions selfless decisions like no one is truthfully black or white everyone is gray and i love that so much like zenith 
you know is a great mom every you know, and i think it really does stand out when it comes to like phil and and powell and eris and rudy and ruiger everyone who is like there are times where i'm arguing with these characters i'm disagreeing with these characters there are times where i'm loving them like and 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 i say that as if like it's something shocking that these characters are human but there are other isekais where it's it's not really like that like don't get me wrong i love overlord and reincarnated as the slime so much so so much but some of the characters in that show are somewhat one-dimensional you know like don't get me wrong they have their quirks like like this character's quirk she's always the annoying one or she's always the horny one but it's pretty one-dimensional whereas rudy is super horny but at the end there he had a legit conversation with himself like am i taking advantage of roxy right now is or not roxy um eris like is this the right thing to like and like you know it, it's very human like where it's like a lot of the times like i've never personally disagreed with rimuru on a lot of things like i'm always like yeah that sounds like a great plan go ahead but when it comes to rudy in this show i've had my issues with this dude like don't get me wrong i love rudy and like if i was in the show with rudy i would be a part of his squad i would i would respect him madly but when he fucks up i'm gonna call him out like like it's like it's a, in that aspect the show is really well done i kind of went off on a tangent there so i apologize but if you guys enjoyed please leave a like let me know your thoughts on this show don't forget to check out the next show that's coming replacing this i'm not gonna tell you what it is it's 86 it's over on patreon right now go check it out it's gonna be a great time um leave a like don't forget to subscribe have a, don't forget to drink some water tell somebody you love them have a great day at upper squad peace